Okay, well, let's get started, I guess. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm just going to start. <laughs> Bear with me. This might end horribly, but hopefully not. He <laughs> and he was he had his hand on the table, and he wasn't completely standing up. He was like this. He was sitting. He was announced it when I shot him. He was went like this, literally. That's when I knew he was dead, or close to it, mm -hmm. and twitching. And that's and I couldn't. I let him. I still, even though the hurt, I still enough of me loved him. But I couldn't stand to watch him twitch. I knew he was gonna die or have a completely deformed face. He's very vain. One of our last conversations we had that was good was that he wants my best friend who's a dentist to do his veneers and wants to get a nose job. Just that kind of person. And I shot him right here. I gave him his nose job. He wanted, I broke it. The, the, the first thing that leapt out at me and absolutely smacked me around the chops is something that, um, something that I do um, and that I am and I'm doing it now I I'm a performer I'm a storyteller by trade and I seem to wangle that into every conversation that I have with anybody on here but um, but in this particular instance it's relevant um, I'm a storyteller and I work with very young children and when I am telling a story when I'm performing I am very visual I very gestural I use my hands and I encourage them to use their hands too and they join in and together we tell a story together not necessarily with words or with animal noises but with our hands and our bodies and this is exactly what she's doing here on a massive scale on an absolutely phenomenal full body massive scale um, and she's performing to this one police officer um and i think it was greg that said that interrogation is theater for one isn't it um and it very much is but kind of the opposite way around here um and so we we, we and we see a lot of her movements up here up in the ecstatic plane as well she's really high and she's and she's getting up and she's moving around and that was just something that that leapt out at me and i thought what a wonderful show <laughs> bravo <laughs> I think she's being truthful, right? But like, this is what happened. Like, you know, everything she's saying is in line with the gestures. Like, I think it happened. I just don't think it happened on that night. I think it's happened in the past. And she's just telling the story of arguments they've had in the past, not necessarily on that night. It could have been a fight that ha that she's ha happened to have like a few times with him because it, from the look of it, going into the backstory, um, he was trying to end things and she was really, really not. Mm. He was obviously not interested in pursuing a relationship with her. And I think that obviously the hillbilly claim um, seemed to really be something for her. Maybe he he did say that and it really got to her. And maybe that's kind of what made her like. It was a, a huge blow to her ego. In, in Joan of Varro's Dangerous Personalities, um, which personality is it that really has abandonment issues and will fight tooth and nail to prevent being abandoned? Do you remember? I can't remember which one. I, th I think it might have been the um, it might have been the uh, borderline personality hmm. is what I do remember. Yeah, the emotional he called it the emotional personality or something. The borderline, and they have a really hard time being you know with abandonment, and they they fight really hard to not be abandoned. Th this reminds me a lot of the movie Fatal Att Attraction where that woman was, you know, constantly pursuing Michael Douglas. Uh, it was Glenn Close that played the title role. But I can tell you from, I had a hiking partner that was from um, Kentucky, and she totally disliked being called a hillbilly. And, and even though that area of the United States, Kentucky, Tennessee, that area is somewhat, you know, it's in, in, in past lore has been re referred to a hillbilly area. But she totally disliked it and one of the reasons why she disliked it was is that she felt like that when people said that that they were also accusing her of being stupid and you know not having you know two cents in her brain and that kind of a thing which was partially true but you know hillbillies make fun of themselves i live 
in the Appalachians. And uh, I mean, we need to embrace these things. You sure do have a Just say, mouth. She, she, she did not <laughs> embrace it at all. <laughs> um, so the things I wrote were huge illustrators showing activities and locations around the room. And it seemed like it's from memory. And that was believable because her she was just like pointing to, you know, and that seemed believable. Now she had an eyebrow flash bringing the interviewer along with her story. She's like, hey, and um, did confirmation glance, you know. She had uh, fading facts when she was repeating what he said to her before she shot him. Like her words just started to off, you know. That um, she had an anger flash with her mouth when she was describing him partially standing over the table. And then you could see I mean, there were little flashes of anger throughout all of them. Um, she had a normal voice when she was when she said the sentence mm -hmm. uh, when I shot him, except for she whispered the word shot. She was like, when I shot him, even though she didn't seem to have trouble talking about shooting him at all, like she had no emotional connection to that. Um, showing the way that he went down on the table, I believe that was true. That seemed like a real observation. Though she was speaking disparagingly about him and his vanity, so she gave him a nose job. And then, and then she realized, I think when she looked at the interviewer, she realized she shouldn't have said that. So right away, she had the um, lip compression. She was like, and then started to fake cry, like to take away from, what she, she didn't have any emotions about that. She was joking about giving him a nose job. And then she, I think, saw the interviewer's face and did that, you know, after. Okay, that's what I got on video number one. Good job. <laughs> wow. wow, that was Thank awesome. You. I'll go next then if that's okay. Thank you. Um, I, won't, um, I won't say a lot. I just want to talk about what when she spoke about um, him wanting a, um, a nose job, so she gave it to him. And I can't help but visualise that that was actually said in the incident as well. Um, I know from other um, other sources and from watching other documentaries and watching some of her um, uh, her court case and um, other things that I think she saw, she shot him six times. Um, so um, the one in the face was probably the fatal one, or could have could have been others. <clears throat> and I could just I could just see that because she there's no doubt she was over overpowered by. Um, jealousy and the motive for the crime was of course the new date um, and I can imagine that she, this was just an, you know um, what they would call a crime of passion which I don't think is fair to say in this sense because um, you know the poor man wanted to break up with her but um, yeah I just um, you know from how she speaks about that I would imagine that she would have got great pleasure of saying that to him probably before she shot him in the face I bet so, you're right yeah, she's probably told other inmates in prison and she might be more open to telling them the truth than she was in court. Um, but I just have a strong gut feeling that it is a guess there, obviously. I've got, I'm not really basing it on much other than I think she would have gone into his apartment rageful intent on killing him and she probably taunted him as well with, you know, as she was shooting him. What a freak. <laughs> Like Jodi Arias. Yeah. 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 That was the first thing I thought when I seen it was she's, it's exactly like Jodi Arias. If I can't have you, then no one can. It's quite interesting how many similarities there are between between them and just in their mm -hmm. demeanour and, and yeah. their re just relentless talking. They just won't shut up. I have uh, a couple things that I did want to talk about. Um, what do you got, Adriana? Everybody talked about whispering and I thought the whispering was really, really interesting because I noticed she does it when she's either lying or it's something that's bad. Like I shot him. She whispers because she knows it's bad. So of course she has to whisper because she knows God or whoever. I don't know. She's an all American girl. You know, I think that's the singing is the all American girl thing. And I think that's her like audition tape in a sense. Again, back to the American girl. That's why she was trying to soften the blows with 
the whole singing and dancing. She could never do it. She's not this kind of killer, you know, it was self-defense. He was so mean. He talked about her family, but she whispered. He said, what did she say? He said to me emotionally, and then she whispers the rest. That was insane, right? Who whispers? He said to me emotionally, I hate you. I hate your family. Y'all are hillbillies. But there's obviously some animosity, I think. <laughs> you know, like he's probably told her on occasions because I don't think he's very nice. I mean, maybe he could be, but I mean, let's let's imagine that he's not the nicest. But he has a lot to he has a lot to prove. He has a good family, he has a great job, you know, all this stuff. I just I don't think he's as nice as maybe he's perceived or they try to show his image. And I think he maybe has said slurs to her like that, but um, was it Claire or Karen that said that she's using past um, past events or past arguments as, as that moment? And I think that's actually true because that was one of the things that I had written as well, that she's taking all this stuff from the past and just building it into this little story and then just being descriptive with her hands. Oh, and the lamp. <laughs> that one was funny. That one actually made me laugh because it was almost like she put too much effort into the lamp thing. Like it was just extra emphasis on the lamp, but then she looked away when she did it. And it just, it didn't match. There was a lot of conflicting behaviors and everything about her is just she's trash. She's not. Poor girl. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> That's all I got. I had it. When she says he's standing up over the table, she initially says he was sitting and something that is it Andrea has just said when she was saying the down motion with the shooting I think he was sitting down when she shot him initially and she's re realized as she said sitting and gone uh, he was standing up over the table at me so like he was down on here but I think he was sitting down and that's why she's doing this with the gun that was how she's initially shot him is he's been sat down and then he's like maybe then slumped over the table and I think because she said he was twitching, I knew he was going to die, so I just shot him again. So, <laughs> I, like, I knew he was going to die, you know. And I think of her. Was, yeah, I think she's really thought, oh, we might survive this, and my self defense story won't work because he's going to live, and what am I going to say then? And so, I think that's what she's meant by that. Like, oh, well, well he was going to die anyway, so, you know, I put him out of a misery like a dying horse. I said, well, he was lame and there was nothing else I could do about it. So I just carried on shooting him. It just does, it, it was very, it made me go. That's a bit odd, isn't it? Like, why would you, if, why would you just keep shooting? You wouldn't unless you were a bit psycho. Mm -hmm. Overkill. Like, yeah, she was I'm really being... upset. Yeah. And like, Jodi Arias, the overkill, you know, with her. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, it's that, I think it's that crime of passion of everything had built up and he kept saying, I don't want to be with you. I don't want to be with you. I've now got someone else and she's just gone, well, no, if I can't have you, no one can. So you're not going on that date and I'm going to shoot you. He had put his arm across the table and there's a lamp. And he had put his arm across the table and had it in my face and was screaming at me at the top of his lungs after he had thrown me around the room and was saying emotionally to me, you're a f***ing hillbilly. I f***ing hate you. I hate everything about you for what you are and my family. And he was screaming it and he was, he had his hand on the table and he wasn't completely standing up. He was like this. He was sitting, he was announced it when I shot him. He went like this. Literally. That's when I knew he was dead. Or close to it mm -hmm. and twitching. And that's, and I couldn't, I let him, I still, even though the hurt, I still, and that's when he loved him. But I couldn't stand to watch him twitch. I knew he was going to die or have a completely deformed face. He's very vain. One of our last conversations we had that was good was that he wants my best friend who's a dentist to do his veneers and wants to get a nose job. Just that kind of person. And I shot him right here. I gave him his nose job. He wanted... I broke it.
Yeah. Do you think she was trying to show herself as a good person by mercy killing him because he was twitching and suffering? <laughs> no, I think she was freaking crazy. Yeah, I yeah, I think she oh. was crazy, one hundred percent. I just feel My, bad what's for him. Just, me too. She says the hurt. Oh, and then the hurt. It was like she tried to ground herself she's like oh wait and then the hurt and then she remembered that what what emotion she has to be expressing it was so funny the way she did that and then the hurt <laughs> wait pause okay let's start remembering what we have to do now I thought that was fun and it's interesting how she um she goes that's the type of person that he is just to like it, make him seem like he's like you know like not a nice person because he wanted to look nice you know yeah. like it's just yeah vanity is a sin you know i mean she's an all-american girl vanity is the worst or one of seven anyways i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and you know i wasn't doing anything that was mean i was like begging him to, to stay in the relationship and be with me because i knew that we weren't really loving each other you know right it told me that he loved me and wanted to be with me I guess somewhere along the way, that grew to hate. He was screaming how much he hated me. I don't know if anyone will ever want to marry me if they know that I killed a boyfriend and helped. <laughs> Not funny, but the stuff he was saying to me was so abusive while he was throwing me around the room. I'll never forget I think in the midst of that, my love turned to hate. I remember screaming, F you. reaching up to grab the shirt. F you, how dare you mock my family? How dare you talk about you? Please stick really my mother and my family. Woe is me. <laughs> what did you say about my mother? <laughs> right, don't talk about her. Don't say emotional to me whispering <laughs> stuff because i can't hear it please some gallows humor in there too you know nobody's gonna marry me if i shot my boyfriend <laughs> so for this one here i i thought it was interesting she started saying i wasn't doing anything bad i was begging him to she says a k i was wondering if she was gonna say i was begging him to kill me but she says i was begging him to she says the k corrects change it to stay in the relationship that thing stood out to me really big and i was like because for for me i see her as an instigator she's going to be in your face she's constantly what well, you're not going to respond to me all she wants is acceptance that's all she wants she wanted him to respond how she felt about him you know she wanted him to respond to one of the 50 messages she sent <laughs> You know, but he was already over it. He didn't care. Who wants somebody who's that crazy in your face? I mean, she barely blinks and her tongue's like, <laughs> but another one. So that one was the kill one. And then, um, and then he was saying stuff while he was throwing me around the room. Then she babbles and she said, it kind of sounded like she said it was hard to forget or I can't forget, but then it's almost as if she, forgets the lie or forget what she wanted to say, changes topic. And I just had this like, did she not remember the lie? She's like, okay, wait, correct. Never mind. Let's go and start talking about, you know, whatever else. And then she's like, well, he was screaming F you, but she whispers, he was screaming at me, F you. What? Who's going to scream that, but do it really quietly. So again, the whispering, I don't know if it's that those are her lies, her embellishments, or just wrongdoings that she's doing. So I'm not really sure, but the whispers are definitely something to look at. But yeah, that's all I got. I'd be interested to know when this, like what stage of the interview this is. Because if you compare that first one where she's like this, and now she's like this, like is this like she's, I think she's realized that she's in a whole heap of trouble now. Maybe she's realised they're not believing what she's saying, you know, like she's got her arms crossed, she's got her fingers curled in, um, you know, she's very monotonous, there's no gestures. It's, very, it's a very different person in this 
huh? I feel. It was pretty early on when she did this stuff. Yeah, if, if that yeah. On, it was yeah. very early on. Mm. It's just interesting that you would yell something, but as you're telling it, you're just, you're whispering. So it's just like being very, really meek, very yeah. meek, kind of like. And I think that that's like the image that she's trying to show right now is that she's meek. She was thrown around the room as she continuously says. I think that, yes, she's trying to now convey the fact that, oh, this, yeah, they're not entertained by me. This is actually really quite serious. Um, and I think there's partly that, but I also think that she's just getting tired. I think she's exhausted herself from all of these these gymnastics that she's doing, all this leaping around the room, and also with her voice as well. Um, and that now she's just go, she's she's just going into survival mode. She's just shutting down. She's just just keeping everything very small, very quiet, just so that she can keep going and keep telling that story and still never shutting up um, or t- stopping to take a breath. Um, I noticed digital flexion as well. Did you see the grip that she had on her arm? Mm. When and because most of the time it's like that, and you can her hand looks like a bit of a paw, a bear paw or a cat's paw, because you can because her her fingers are so curled under in sort of squeezing into her arm. And at one point she she kind of lifts her elbow, and you can see those those fingertips, and and they're they're pressing into the flesh of her arm. And I think that's that's really got to hurt. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, and and again, the, the the whispering kind of whispering phrases that were apparently shouted by by him. I think they were shouted by her, actually. Yeah. And um and that's why and that's it's severity softening. I think mm. that's what we're seeing there. Claire, okay. what do you got? The arm Griffin, like you said, she's very clung into herself with this, and she's kind of. I think it's a mix of all of them. It's some stress. She's trying to comfort herself and she's quite insecure. I think the fact that the that the police officer said nothing has made her go, you aren't believing me. I've given you everything I've got and you've said nothing. You haven't like mm. took the bait. You haven't gone, oh yeah, you're right. You're so hard done by. You were so abusive and you know, I fully understand why you've done what you've done. And she kind of brings in that self-defense thing. The 911 call I listened to, and the first thing she says is, I've killed my boyfriend in self-defense. And mm. I think it was Greg who says it. It's it she's she's storytelling, she's not telling the story, she's not saying what's happened. She's telling her that her version of what happened, her story. And I think she's realized at this point no one's paying attention. No one's really taken now. She's become quite withdrawn and quite you know, no one's going to marry me with, you know, I've killed my boyfriend in self-defense. She has to get it in there again. And I think it was Karen who said, it's that moment of realization of no one believes me. And, oh, I've just killed the one person I wanted. And now who's going to marry me? You know, I only killed him in self-defense. And she's now trying to tell the story of, well, it wasn't my fault. It was all in self-defense. And look, I'm just this weak person. And I think in one interview or one part of the interview, she goes out, you know, I'm not your typical kind of murderer. I don't know what your typical kind of murderer is. I thought if you murdered someone, you were the typical kind of murderer. But she's like, no, no, I'm not your typical kind of murderer. I'm a different type of murderer. I'm the nice <laughs> kind. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't murder people to be... And she actually says I wasn't being mean at one stage. You know, I, w- I wasn't being mean to him. Like, but then you killed him. I think that's mean. Yeah. In, in my book, that's quite mean. <laughs> that's <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much what I had on that one. So I had a lot of the stuff that other people, um, other people have had, obviously. Um, so yeah, I really noticed that Caden struck from the last video, and has she got changed as well? So. Because she, um, the cadence dropped and she, she just seemed really different. So I didn't know whether she maybe got on vacation and come back because I was like, how the voice had changed in it's like it got lower and slower. I wondered, you know, has she taken medication? And I think someone spoke about some of her character, character traits, and I, I can't diagnose, but she certainly does fit in with um, EUPD and I think emotionally unstable personality order. I think someone else was getting to that earlier. And I was like, as she had her medication and come back in, is that why she's like that? Um, 
So, um, um, like joking, she was laughing when, when she said that no one's going to marry her. And, you know, do you think maybe that is a bit of a joke? Because I think you're right, now. Although she did get married in prison to a, um, was a man turned into a female. So, yeah, um, you're, maybe she did find someone in the end. Um, yeah, uh, uh, I know it wasn't featured in that, but um, someone else me mentioned a peace phone call. And I think she said as well that she left it up to 15 minutes for calling for help. Now, that's, she clearly wasn't rushing to get him any um, any help at all, was she? I just think she's, um, and also I think she was uh, probably stalking him by what, by what I've read in some of the court papers and stuff. So, yeah, it's a really dangerous woman. And, you know, I think this was, um, I think Ryan probably was not tortured, but he would have been verbally tortured, I think, uh, before he was shot. So that's just my stuff. So, yeah, sorry if that's not what's in the video, but it, I just think that's um, all the other bits that are going on. What was that girl's name that Dr. Phil interviewed, Aaron? What? Oh, oh um, Aaron McGrathy or McCaffey or McCaffey? McCaffey? Yeah. So um, in this one, she's she's talking in the front of her mouth like baby talk. Um, just like that gal, Aaron, whatever. And, um, you know, because she's talking all, you know, and I feel like she's doing that to try to manipulate. And let's see, um, some weird inappropriate joke with a genuine smile and chuckle because she's weird and inappropriate. That's what I wrote. She's squeezing her arm, sticking her nails into her skin. I feel like it's as an adapter to keep herself grounded. You know, she's got a whole grip on there and sticking her nails in there to, to just stay present. And uh, um, when she was uh, when she was recalling saying, "How dare you?" Uh, I saw an anger flash of her mouth, and. I, mean, I bet you she has a terrible temper. I bet when she goes off, she goes off. But, um, and then was she, let's see. So she, yeah, there was an anger flash. How dare you? But then she goes into a cry face, I think to mask the anger. I think she was just put that mask right on. Um, and then she's covering her super sternal notch and dropping her chin. But I don't think that that was genuine. I think it was all an act as she's doing the romancer with her eyes and her request for approval brows you know she's just trying to work this police officer and she's a liar and a murderer and i don't like her <laughs> <laughs> and you know i wasn't doing anything that was mean i was like begging him to, to stay in the relationship and be with me because I knew that we weren't really loving each other, you know, right? It told me that he loved me and wanted to be with me. And I guess somewhere along the way, that grew to hate. He was screaming how much he hated me. I don't know if anyone will ever want to marry me if they know that I killed a boyfriend and not. <laughs> not funny, but... Stuff he was saying to me was so abusive while he was throwing me around the room. I'll never I think in the midst of that, my love turned to hate. I remember screaming, F you. reaching up to grab the shirt. F you, how dare you mock my family? How dare you talk about Please like, stick really my mother and my family. Wild. <laughs> Sadie and I both, we got our mouths covered. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving her major stink eye. I was just sitting here just going, yeah. I honestly and I have like contempt on my face. Yeah. I had to that's, cover it. Yeah, that's like, it's, but it's also shocking. Do you think you can get a fair trial in the second round? I don't believe I can gain a fair trial in Campbell County. I don't believe that that's possible here in this county. Is that because of all the media coverage or why, why would you think that? I feel like there's a biased opinion against me here. 
and um, that's one reason why we felt like we'd be retaliated against in in this situation. Mm -hmm. It has not. This has nothing to. This is not a publicity stunt. This is not BS. We genu we genuinely love each other and have love for one another. I feel that Richard is my soulmate. The the change of venue is an entirely separate issue that I still feel strongly about. Um, if I can go back, um, when you were with Ryan, though, did you identify as as bisexual, as lesbian? I guess I guess I'm trying to figure out how you know you've fallen in love with with. I don't unique believe now. that I would label myself as straight, bisexual, lesbian, mm -hmm. I am someone who has fallen in love with certain people. Okay. Um, I, if you would have asked me five, six years ago, am I straight, am I bisexual, am I lesbian, I would have said I'm a, you know, heterosexual woman. But things happen in your life and you meet people and you connect with people. And I have a connection that is very true and real. And um, what I feel for Unique is is real and what unique feels for me is real and i don't have a doubt about that in my mind and that's all we're doing here is exercising our first amendment right to become married awesome <laughs> i was half expecting that tongue to come up and like lick her eyeball like the lizard does <laughs> That's all mm. i could see through the whole video i couldn't analyze anything in that because i just kept seeing snake tongue <laughs> so distracting, isn't it? Yeah. Distracting. Because it's an interview, and she's trying to make herself look good. Is that what it is? I thought maybe nerves, like her mouth was dry because she she yeah. couldn't get the words out quick enough. And it, it was like, it, it, does she need a drink of water? Someone offer her a drink of water and start this again. I just could not get past it. It was like a snake. I think she's trying to be or trying to be sexy. <laughs> it's not working for me, but <laughs> there's two interviewers, isn't there? There's an interviewer and a cameraman, and I, I, I go. I've said that before, and I was convinced that she kept looking at the cameraman, looking her lips at the cameraman, and maybe she fancied him. She's in a little women's prison. I know she's got unique, but we all know that didn't work out. Maybe that's why she's doing it. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know if she if she is doing that out of habit or because she's on some medication. And you can hear that her mouth is dry. You can hear the clickety click, you know, mm. of the dryness in there. So I don't know if she's just trying to to uh, you know, she's nervous and her mouth is dry and she's just trying to she's just trying to talk. Yeah. <laughs> but um one thing that I noticed apart from all the weird mouth movements is I would wager money that she has had braces and retainers because of the way that she moves her mouth is like somebody that had braces and retainers. Do you, do you see what I mean? I would wager money on that. And then the rest of the moving of the mouth is just annoying. Um, I, did, I, think I she, did notice that Erin. And I, I, I was thinking the, the way that her mouth moves when she speaks is really odd apart from the all the licking and the, the tongue jutting and stuff it's it, she's got quite a wide mouth whereas i've got quite a small mouth um but it's it just just you know the way she, she speaks it kind of she's she's talking from the corners of her mouth if that kind of like yeah. she had springs like somebody that had springs or um uh, i mean i mean uh, rubber bands rubber bands yeah. that had rubber bands and that and also wow. like that they have the silver like i can picture the silver things that had the rubber bands that she just moves her mouth like somebody who who had appliances in her mouth. Um, I think it's so insightful. Wow. Sorry. It seems like uh, every time they uh, she mentions something about sexuality, like being um, homosexual or lesbian or straight, that's when the snake tongue comes out. So I think there's some issue about that. Mm. it's also interesting because she goes um this is not a pub publicity stunt or anything like that and she does it then too so it's like it makes it like it honestly makes me think that the, i mean like this whole thing was a publicity stunt because she just yeah. wanted to get the attention again because 
Um, and hopefully a new venue for her trial. So she yes. might, could get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because she, they weren't married for very long at all, were they? So I think she really doubts the feelings of her, her partner as well, because every, every time she mentions the feelings, she speaks really, really fast. That's a good point. Yeah, that's very true. And she, it's like she had to um, convince her, herself, and she was like, you know, the love we have is true. It's real. It's real. It's really, really <laughs> real. That, <laughs> that's kind of what she said about her boyfriend, though, wasn't it? I knew he loved me. I knew he wanted to be with me. And I yeah. just knew. It's like she's yeah. always trying to convince herself that these things are yeah. real. In her mind, if she said something three times, then it's real and true and real and true. And we all know that's. We all know that's the rule. If you say it three times, it must be true. Yeah. Yeah, that rule of three it all comes back to storytelling. <laughs> storytelling and three is a motif that you will see through almost every single fairy tale that you could possibly pluck out of the air. It's embedded in it. And Three is the magic number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say for clip three, one thing that I <laughs> noticed was that this was one of the most normal appearing <laughs> clips so far. The first two, I mean, she's probably the calmest. I mean, granted, her tongue is going everywhere. Um, I love that when right before uh, the interviewer had asked her if, she, what did he say? Um, if she had always identified as homosexual. She kind of has this mouth thing that she does. I don't know if it's fear or something where she's just afraid of what he's going to ask. Because the first question, I don't even remember what it was now thinking back. But here I have written that she had her face um, kind of looked scared, but she never really answered directly. She kind of did the whole chaff and redirect and gave this huge story <laughs> about whatever nobody gives a crap about, even though it's relative, but really it's not the answer that we needed, but still the most normal appearing thing that I saw so far besides the tongue. I think if she's been in imprisoned for a period of time and she's probably on some sort of stabilizing medication, what do you think of that? Mm -hmm. That's so she um, seems you know, probably on lithium and, and thorazine. <laughs> mm -hmm. her, lithium. her mouth reminded me of Courtney Stodden. Do you remember that um, 16 year old that married that actor, the guy that played in the Green Mile? Oh, yeah, I remember that girl was so high. Holy crap, I killed me to watch their little video <laughs> they did. She's like, we're so in love and I'm like please leave this girl alone I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna kill you you're a great actor stop <laughs> That's what do I you thought. remember that part when she was looking at him and she was like going like oh, the weird stuff with no, her mouth I'm getting flashbacks that's, that's what this gal I mean reminded me of that I had to write down Courtney Stodden so that I could tell you so that you could mm. cringe with me it's terrible it's so much better to cringe together <laughs> um, let's see and the interviewer asked, if, when he said, if I can go back, and he wanted to ask about the relationship, her relationship with Ryan, you could see her, she had a micro expression of contempt. Uh, it was, it was really clear. And I, I don't know if it was actually contempt. I mean, maybe she's just messed up and her mouth is just always going involuntarily, you know, maybe she can't help it. Oh, yeah. And when she, oh. okay. What's it called when the guys talk about um, when somebody like Jesse Smollett did it, when they, you hold the vowel for a while, when you're saying a certain word and you hold the vowel. All right, so she did that saying the word people, but she held her mouth. She was like people and held her mouth in that peep that I just wanted to, she's like people, boom, boom. I wanted to <laughs> smack that mouth. Oh, yeah. oh, I just, I'm so sorry. I really dislike her. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. And I, I already said that the dry mouth or lip grooming or if it's habit drug or drug induced, drug induced, or she's just trying to look good. You know what? We may never know unless the guys go over it and tell us. We'll have to get them to do this one so we can see how good we were. Yeah. See how I spot that's, we that's a great idea. <laughs> you see if they can pay to us. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. We might even be better than them. <laughs> of course. No, they'll just say I've never heard of this. They'll just say I've never heard of this, and then boom, next. Yeah. <laughs> Sadie, if you could 
submit <laughs> our group project in for for marking that'll be superb <laughs> you got it. i feel bad for disliking her so much you know i mean i i should feel sorry for her i think but i think that's that. entirely she's reasonable she's the reason my t-shirt exists <laughs> 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 Brilliant. That's awesome. Oh, and especially when she says people, she's like, people. Bing, bing, bing. Do you think you can get a fair trial in the second round? I don't believe I can gain a fair trial in Campbell County. I don't believe that that's possible here in this county. Is that because of all the media coverage or why, why would you think that? I feel like there's a biased opinion against me here and um, that's one reason why we felt like we'd be retaliated against in, in this situation. Mm -hmm. It has not, this has nothing to, this is not a publicity stunt. This is not BS. We, genu we genuinely love each other and have love for one another. I feel that Richard is my soulmate. The, the change of venue is an entirely separate issue that I still feel strongly about. Um. If I can go back, um, when you were with Ryan, though, did you identify as as bisexual, as lesbian? I guess I guess I'm trying to figure out how you know you've fallen in love with with. I don't Unique believe now. that I would label myself as straight, bisexual, lesbian. Mm -hmm. I am someone who has fallen in love with certain people. Okay. Um, I if you would have asked me five, six years ago, am I straight? Am I bisexual? Am I lesbian? I would have said I'm a, you know, heterosexual woman, but things happen in your life and you meet people and you connect with people. And I have a connection that is very true and real. And, um, what I feel for unique is, is real. And what unique feels for me is real. And I don't have a doubt about that in my mind. And that's all we're doing here is exercising our first amendment right to become married. I need to self-soothe and just touch my face for a while. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting too. Um, I mean, she's obviously a very cold person, but even when she was talking about somebody that she apparently loves, there's no, like, there's no love, you know, it's like, and the way that she just continues, like, oh yeah, like we're in love, we're in love, we're in love. <laughs> it's just like, believe me. Anyway, that's, uh, Yeah. No, she seems to lack emotions when it's appropriate. And it seems like she just goes from zero to 100. She's either flat or she's pissed off. That's she's mania, very stone man. Faced. She's very stone faced, isn't she? I think a thought had moved maybe twice during that whole clip. Yeah. It's like I thought maybe it was a bit of a Botox thing, but it's not. There is some movement in there, but very few and far between that she actually makes any face, facial movement. Yeah, there's some asking approval for sure. And then there's also, um, it's just weird. She's got like a moment where she's kind of thinking, but it seems like she's kind of like, uh, like holding something back there too. Like, right, mm, yeah. you know, the opinion. yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, next clip. Yep. Last clip. Let's do it. I feel as if I've already been retaliated against. So even if it's only been seven days. Yes. I mean, do you have confirmation they received your request? Um, no, I do not. I, I feel as if I've been retaliated against at the actual institution, at the, at the jail, because the jailer was contacted by Richard McBee, mm -hmm. Unique Taylor, about our um, marriage. And um, within hours of his request to the jailer, letting the jailer know what was going on, and that he didn't want any type of retaliation. Um, I, I was moved to a different cell mm -hmm. and um, all of my legal documents for my court case were taken from me and they were taken to the administration office on the other side of the jail and they have not been given back to me. They were seized and um, I feel as if our constitutional First Amendment right to marry because unique is biologically a male and I'm a woman. 
are being violated and were being retaliated against due to my high profile case and you know my name in Cincinnati and unique's status as a transgender woman also unique has not been retaliated against because unique just won a federal appeal for retaliation against the jail so unique's not being retaliated against no one has hurt unique or gone into unique cell and done anything to unique but i was retaliated against and that's how i perceive it okay she's such a victim yes that's all I got from that is I'm, I'm a victim and I, you know, I've had this happen to me and they took my things and my, con our constitutional rights, suddenly it becomes our, and then it goes back to my and I and how unique hasn't been touched, but I personally have. And then it's all about the, my name and, and unique status and my high profile case. It's all about me, 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 me with that. It, it, it doesn't. It's like I am a victim and this is all about me and it doesn't matter what I've done, but me, 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 me. That's pretty much what I took from that is it's all about here. Lovely, lovely. Um, within that, lovely uh, resume statements um, that I noticed um, and uh, about her, her high profile case. Her head goes from being down, chin down to my high profile case chin up and a smile head back and then she mentions about my name <sighs> and she's like yeah my name my mm -hmm. name you know and, and you see her ego kind of push through to the front and go here i am um and uh yeah it's just oh beautiful um there was um also uh, just before that um, says the words uh, our marriage or my marriage and uh, and it's, it's kind of almost she keeps the words to the back of her throat she's like to my marriage and there's some breathiness there and it's like she almost doesn't want to say the words she doesn't want they do, those words don't want to come out um, and I thought that was interesting because when I got married it's all I wanted to talk about you know you couldn't shut me up about me being married and it's our marriage and the wedding and, da, 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 da. and, and okay it's this is not uh, such a big celebratory thing for her because of the circumstances but uh but yeah if it was true and genuine then those those words wouldn't be hiding in in the in the back under your breath mm. and her face would have matched it too just like Sadie was talking about when she's talking about love and stuff there's no expression of love on her face at all She's she just does flat. Thing. It's because she's a storyteller. She doesn't know how to act. <laughs> she's a bad actress. Her eyes and her mouth seem completely independent from the rest of her face. <laughs> like, everything here is still, and then her eyes and her mouth are just all over just the place. You seem, <laughs> you seem completely independent. I only have one thing for a clip for. Um, there was a point where he had asked, um, did you did do you have a confirmation that they received your request she's almost doing this like a prairie dog thing but it's almost as if she's trying to look over to see what his paper is her tongue's like going a mile a minute she's like, blah, 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 blah. and then she's you know kind of looking over but she just looks really anxious this is probably one of the most anxious times i've ever seen her look anyways but she's kind of just like looking over but her whole body kind of like comes up and she's just kind of like like she's looking. It's really interesting, but that was the only one that I really got for that. She did the same movement when she was talking about uh, her partner winning. The, that sort of proud movement again, lifting her chin up. I think it's just like another thing on her case that's like, you know, that she's just like, oh yeah, he or she it's weird that she i'm not quite sure if she, she, or she, or... <laughs> she calls him richard but then calls him unique as well mm. so it's like she yeah. can't figure out what the right pronoun is there what the right name is to be using and to be in love like you know like you you know somebody's name like it's like it just it's more it's more it just seems like it's just kind of like uh for her high profile case you know like it's just like <laughs> 
it just doesn't really fit you know like it just seems like this is she's just after attention I feel like she's like well, she it's m- gonna be May <laughs> was the Backstreet Boys <laughs> I, she I don't know mentioned, <laughs> sorry she mentions about unique status and I think that's where unique comes into her story and and she's to her benefit she's pick somebody who you know is trans it's all in at the moment and she's got a high status within the, the system and how you know she hasn't had any retaliation because she's already won a case so it's kind of like she's gone in and gone well who's the big dog who can I, who, who can I hide behind sort of thing and who can I use to benefit me in, in a sense as well so she's gone for someone you know who's got a, a status to help her along the way and to be like well this helps me and it gives me more high profile because she brings her status into it then as well. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. And it also adds drama so that there's always something going on. She's just not just doing her time. Mm. She's fighting this, she's doing that. You know, she's got all these things going on. Like Joe Diarius and a t-shirt that she'd made and she was getting everyone in prison into all these cool things and she was teaching them how to read and write. Like, look at all these amazing things I'm doing and... She's the same, look, I, you know, I'm going out with someone in the trans community and this has happened and that happens and it's like she's trying to use it to up her own status. What I was going to say is is uh, the consistency because when she referred to Richard U- Unique as Richard, she said him, but later on in the story, she referred to R- Richard as Unique and so she stumbled on the pronouns because I think she wanted to stay consistent. I don't think that there was any sort of, I don't think she meant anything bad by it. I think she was just trying to stay consistent in her language. You know, I'm, I'm not hating on her right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm giving her some credit for trying to say the right words, but instead of, because she's already said him. So instead of saying her, she just said the name so that it would just stay with the continuity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, so with regards to how she speaks about the names and the, what looks like uh, to be a mistake, I just don't think any of, any of what she said or done there was a mistake. I think she, um, I think she probably likes to call him Richard, because in her mind, I think that's perhaps what she is seeking. Um, And um, I think um, you know, if you were to, I'm sure if we were to ask Unique what she likes to be called, she probably um, doesn't like being called Richard. So I think that was maybe a little, little bit of a slip of her um, just kind of saying her preferred, um, you know, preferred way to address her partner as he, as Richard, and then just kind of buffing it up with what she ought to say. Um, but I, I don't think it was an accident that she called him Richard. I think that's probably, um, you know, probably her preferred way to address address. I don't know. I, I only say that because she is so much all about me, um, and she is quite clever and calculated. So I don't, I, you know, I don't think that she's going to be making many mistakes. I think she's just going to be making choice, you know, choices that suit her and suit her narrative really she's a selfish jerk like that yep you're back to hating her again erin <laughs> yep yeah <laughs> i'm consistent Kimmel Kelly 911. ma'am i killed my boyfriend in self-defense what did you kill him with a gun a loaded gun in the house tell me where the gun is right now the gun is in the
exactly what happened. He beat me and tried to carry me out of the house, and I came back in to get my things, and he was right in front of me, and he reached down and grabbed the gun, and I grabbed it out of his hand and pulled, pulled the trigger. Okay. All right. Do you need an ambulance? Have you been injured? I'm not injured, ma'am. I was thrown into the side of the couch. All right. What's his name? Ryan Carter Poston. He's an attorney in Cincinnati. Okay. And have you had a history of domestic violence with him? Yes. Okay. And is this your gun? No, this is his gun. He keeps loaded guns in the house. So he, he slammed you into the couch, but you don't have any injuries? I don't have any injuries. I was just very frightened. He's just a lot bigger than me. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. I'm 5'8", 120. And he, and he picked me up. And I said, let me get my things at least if we're going to break up. And he threw me across the room. And I was very startled. I was laying on the floor. Okay. All right. And I killed him. Ma'am, you're sure he's not breathing at all? No, that's okay. They actually have someone that's outside almost right now, but I'm going to stay on line with you, okay? Ma'am, and then because he was twitching and I knew he was going to die anyway, and he was making funny noises, I shot him a couple more times just to kill him because I knew he would have been... I'm sorry, you said you shot him a couple more times after that? Yeah, I... I How many times did you shoot him total? I don't know. Okay, because he was twitching and you knew he was going to die, so you shot him again? And not to make sure he was dead because he was twitching so bad and I don't want to lay there and twist. So you shot him instead of calling 911? Yeah, I did because I knew he was going to die anyway. There's no words. The Oscar does not go to Shana Huber's. That was the worst <laughs> acting I've ever heard in all my life. <laughs> The whole story. It's like she'd sat there for them 15 minutes and gone, right, what am I going to say? This is what I'm going to... And, uh, you know, he was a bad person. He kept guns in the house. Like, I've just killed him, but he kept loads of guns in the house. Like, he's the worst person ever. There was loads of guns in his house. It's just... Psh. Yeah, it's his fault. Yeah, it was his own yeah. fault. He kept the guns yeah. in the house. He was asking yeah, to be shot. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he made me kill him. Exactly. That, that's it what it's at. Like, he made it happen. When the 911 operator asked if there was a history of domestic violence, her yeah was too short, too quick, and too quiet. Very high-pitched as well at the end. That was a yeah. lie. Yeah. It was quite high-pitched at the end as well, like the uptone in it of, yeah, 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 that, 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 that was exactly it, what you've just said there. It certainly looks very tidy in the flat as well, if they had a, a bit of a row. And he was throwing her around the room. In one of the documentaries, the police had said there was not a thing out of place. And on the table where she said he'd thrown it, there was like um, just objects, a cup and things. And there was nothing out of place at all. Everything was perfect. But she also said that he threw her on the lounge and then she said she was on the floor. Yeah. What yeah. happened then? When he attacked her, she said she was coming back in. He was right in front of me. Like he was coming to attack her, but I thought he was sitting. She said he was sitting at the table when she shot him. How is he right in front of her now? Like, where are we sitting right in front of? Oh, yeah, wait, when she was instigating another fight, right? Because he was like, I'm just going to sit and do my work while you're moving your shit out because nobody cares. I have Miss Ohio to go to. She's beautiful and blonde, you know, second runner up, whatever. Cool. Let's do this. (laughs) (laughs) And then I think she just gets too much info on that call. And I think the reason why she does that is transparency because she wants to be accepted. She's going to, right at the end, she tells him way too much information. And I shot him some extra times. Well, why, why would anybody say that? Transparency. She doesn't want to seem like she's lying or she's making it up. So she gives too much information. You know, that's what I think about that whole thing. So she could get her whole story out right there. Right exactly. Because so they can see, well, you're holding anything back. Nope. I told you guys right away. I shot him a bunch of times, but it doesn't say about the rest. Well, I mean, none of it adds up. There's no blood. There's no nothing. How did she even shoot him? I really think suicide should be really considered. Do they check her for gunshot residue? Do they check him for gunshot residue? Do they check the whole thing or do they just take her, her um, admitting to killing him? I mean, it seems like maybe crappy detective work i don't know or if this is just the information that we have and there was really good detective work i don't know but is it really a question of suicide i don't know that's just what i'm thinking it just doesn't none of this adds up the way she's doing it showing how she's shooting i think there had to have been some kind of fight or something that led up because like i said she keeps doing this down motions and then she broke it 
I don't there's I just think that, few that when she's doing that motion I think that's her um you know she probably did hit the gun on the table um but whether it was a loaded gun or whether it was a different gun, because there were several guns at the property. So, you know, I think she would have, as well as shooting him, she would have been waving that gun around and she slamming it on the mm -hmm. table. I just think she would have played cat and mouse with him. And then perhaps if he did go to stand up, then that's when she would have shot him. Yeah, and that um, might go to why there's not as much blood. I've never shot anyone, I don't know. But if she shot him in the body first, yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, and then and then that might play with what we were all saying before about, um, you know, about his about his face. Oh, he wanted a nose job, and yeah, and we said we think that she actually said that to him. Yeah, so, yeah. And they said, oh, you want your nose job? Bang, here you go. Yeah, <laughs> and that was the last. I, one. I think I think I he know. would have stood up. The first one would have probably been stomach. And then he would have like slumped back down. Um, and then the rest, um, I think probably after that, after one, that's not going to kill him, but going to disarm him or make him not able to over overthrow her. Um, that one would kind of keep him uh, where, you know, keep him in a position where she could do what she wanted. And then the other shots probably were the face and maybe she just did one at the end up to... I don't know. I don't know, but um, Twitter. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. See the, Twitter. I didn't see the autopsy report. Seeing her in these clips, seeing her personality, and seeing how just anger just leaks out all the time, I'm I'm thinking she probably shot him in the face first. Yeah, he's probably okay. like, you know what, boosh, right in the face. Yeah, and then but, but I, the only reason why I said because I do think if he got shot in the face, then the blood would go everywhere. So maybe if he'd been losing all the blood first, that's the only reason why I said that. Mm. Oh, interesting. I wonder what caliber gun it was and stuff. Because, I mean, sometimes the bullet will go in and it'll just bang around on the inside without an exit wound. So that means there wouldn't be a lot of blood right. from, mm -hmm. the, from the face shot. I don't know. I'm going to look it I up seen, and yeah. write you guys about it later. Yeah, do it. Oh, I, I seen one interview with neighbours that said, the, the gunshots went bang, 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 bang. So it was two and then four. Oh. So I think them initial oh. two is what put them down. Right. And then them mm. four, I can only assume, was the nose job she was giving them. Yeah. Near the, like the, them initial two is what put them down. And then that's when she's gone. He's still twitching. He's, you know, he's not dead. Because yeah. she actually says on the 911 call, he's completely dead. Not, he's yeah. dead, he's not breathing, he's, he's completely, completely dead. Yeah. There's some strong Mister. words, aren't there? He is completely dead. I have made yeah. sure of that. He is mm. not moving. It's like she, she's very final in that. Oh, he's completely yeah. dead. Wow. No doubt in her mind he is gone. Yeah, yeah. And so I think she's given them too. Like you say, she's she's put him down. She's made sure that, you know, he, he can't come back up. And then she's gone, oh, he's still twitching. Gonna have to fix this. Here you go. One, two, three, four. And then that's why she's gone. No, he's completely dead. Completely gone. Yeah. No signs of life there. 15 minutes later, she decides to call and get him. Well, I feel like she was help, just building maybe. up that speech. I think she was just building yeah. up that 15 minute Oscar Winham performance that she didn't give. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what was happening then 15 minutes. Like, what do we say here? Because it was like the whole story was there. From yeah. beginning to it, we had a fight. He threw me around. I shot him with a loaded gun. He keeps them in the house, you know. You know, it's like everything was there. It was self defense. Yeah. Self defense. Yeah, it she's was, got her you know, whole. He threw story. me on the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. and, and then she keeps on saying "mom" as well. She's very polite in this yeah. call compared to the oh, other. Oh yeah, very kids. nice. Yeah. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> mm. yeah, that's true. Ah, ah, politeness. <laughs> 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 Um, yep, that's it. We actually had a lot. Wow. We had a lot. We had uh, in that one there. We had some hesitancy, increased speed. We had politeness over apology, many confession, exclusions, chronology. There was everything. She had all the four points. Just saying for that one, <laughs> she was prop. I don't even. I didn't even score it on that one, but she had all of them. That is so she had good. Throat clasping, shrugging, everything. It was great. I'm gonna good make stuff. one of those on my wall too. That's so good. That it's must have fun. taken forever, though. Three days. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Three days. I saw somebody else when we did the um um uh, Merry Christmas video. What well, didn't um there was somebody who had an actual post off it, so I'm sure that you can. Yeah. Oh yeah, he had. Um, a, I saw that one. He had like a a little what yeah, like eleven by thirteen it. kind of a poster. Yes. I want one of those so I can put yeah, over here. I have them everywhere. I have this one, and I have this little folded one that I just carry. Oh my god, that's so cool. Good for you. It's You're good really stuff. making it stick in your brain. I love Chase it. Chase is yeah, making I it stick that. in my brain. Blame that guy. I, it's not my fault. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm on chapter that. eleven on stuff on uh, six minute X ray right now. Nice, I love that book. Six, um, chapter six, chapter eight are my favorites. Elicitation, chapter eight is the best. It's so good, so good. Oh, this is gonna make Chase so happy if he sees this. He's just Don't tell crazy. him. <laughs> God, do we need to get him bigger? Does he need a bigger ego? Just like, <laughs> he's the greatest. He's so awesome. <laughs> Yanina, are you sleepy? I am sleepy. Yes, I, um, I keep, I keep, I keep getting distracted because oh, my little girl just got up and went to the bathroom and then went back to bed. And what are you Aww. doing awake, mommy? Oh well, you know what? <laughs> I think, I think we should probably, on that note, say goodbye and uh, we can do this again. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate thank it. You. And thank, thank you so much. Thank you for the there. Good night, everybody. Happiness. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. 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 Bye.